Hi again YouTube, um, I've been posting up lots of videos about um, mainly kind of 80s toys and things that I collect. Um, I've put up some other posts about um, my pet armadillo if you want to check that out. But this video is about um, a gremlin that I'm sculpting at the moment. So you just come with me this way. Here he is. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to do a sort of a, a typical um, stripe uh, at the moment. And this is all sculpted out of, um, well, I started with a wire frame, but then this stuff that you can see is um, milliput, which is like a putty that uh, dries in the air. Um, so there is another video that shows it in a slightly earlier stage. Um, what I've done since then is um, started working on these kind of um, plates on the arms uh, and then all this kind of skin texture down the arm here um, and also I've built up um, the body a bit more and just put more of these kind of um, bumps on on the belly um, that's going to take quite a bit of kind of building up yet it's it's going to have all the skin texture added over the top of this um, but I've also done the legs or started to do the legs Again, this is just building up these um, bigger plates. Um, one thing I wanted to point out actually on this video is um, the way that I've done this. I don't know if you can see, but I, before I put any of these on, I just put on these kind of long um, pieces of um, clay first, or milliput rather, um, just like long kind of worms really. Let them dry, and then I've made a sort of a rough shape and then put that over the top and this just allows you then to push down um, in these um, sort of bits in between uh, and it, it gives this kind of undulating effect which works really well for this sort of thing um, and then when this is all still slightly wet the mini part you can press into it uh, or not wet I should say soft instead of wet you push in and then you can build these kind of uh, edges and you can kind of take notches out and that kind of thing. Um, I was just going to show you because the reason I've brought him up here into my kind of living room is because I've got this kind of cabinet of curiosities in the background here um, and I will be doing other videos on that um, but I just wanted to show you something that I kind of um, use often. So if we look in here this is um, uh, some fossils in here so if I just take a couple there's this one uh, and there's another one here it's just to show you um, where I kind of get some of my inspiration from quite often so this fossil here this is a armadillo scoot from a fossil armadillo and can you see the shape of it so it's got these kind of flat edges um, and Obviously on a, a big sort of armadillo, these would all kind of interlock. Um, so it sort of is inspiration for doing these kinds of um, shapes where they all kind of interlock on here. And even like if you look on here, um, this is all where I've kind of pressed in these kinds of shapes. Do you see? Where they all kind of interlock. Um, the other thing, of course, when you look at this one, it kind of indents. Um, so it looks like it's kind of dipped in the middle so in here look I've done those kinds of textures in there um, so that's one thing this other fossil here um, is from the back of a crocodile crocodile um, scoot I'll leave it in the box actually um, so yeah can you see on this one it's got like holes in it sort of pressed into it um, actually, uh, another thing I can show you, this cabinet down the bottom, there's a crocodile skull. Um, and again, can you see like the, um, the textures in there? Um, quite often when you're sculpting, you can use something called a, a ball stylus, um, which is basically like a stick with a ball on the end. I'll show you one here. That, um, this is a bit sort of encrusted with milliput, but um, you use this to kind of press down into the clay 
and you can get those kinds of you know holes and things by using this kind of tool um, so I'll, I'll be doing quite a bit of that I mean you can see in here look on the arms quite a lot of this texture uh, was done with a ball stylus just pressed into it um, I'll show you a few of the other tools that I use just to give you an idea what I'm uh, using for this at the moment so I've got ball stylus uh, this is a finer ball stylus uh, then we've got uh, this which has got like a fairly sharp point on the end but but not needle sharp this is a needle sharp point this is just a mounted needle that's quite useful for really kind of fine stuff um, then I've got another um, just like a sort of stick really and then this small screwdriver as well can be quite useful for making kind of straightish edges so those are the tools that I've been using at the moment I have got like sort of hundreds of old dentist tools that I've collected over the years but um, this little selection seems quite good for, for what I've been doing on him um, so if you look at his head I've still got quite a bit of texture and things that I need to build up on the face um, but let me show you some of the detail on the cheek here so again here is a lot there's a lot of sort of hexagonal type scales um, on a lot of these ones I chose to do where they're sort of more forming longer lines um, I've got these kinds of details on the edge here uh, and these kind of spikes here um, on the sort of main eyebrow ridge again I've chosen to do this kind of effect uh, and on the top of his head again I, I've used this um, sort of effect instead for those kind of ridges um, I can't wait to get this guy done and start painting him because that's going to be really really good fun um, just like the way I start is I paint the whole thing kind of one colour like quite a dark colour and then I start building up the lighter colours on top um, so even I think just seeing him uh, darker is going to make such a difference um, with the legs um, obviously I've still got to build up this texture down on the feet I said on my last video like they're not really webbed the feet I just did that um, for now to help kind of support him because he's freestanding at the moment uh, even though already he weighs a ton because of the milliput um, but I'm going to build up um, the toes so they'll be a lot thicker and they have a lot of like scales and things wrapped around them um, so that will all help and it is just more of the same really just building textures all up on the hands um, on the arms I'm trying to keep all these kind of muscle shape so can you see like on the the bottom part of the arm is like because you have two bones in this part of your arm um, you build up the muscles over the top in two sections compared to the top part of the arm which is kind of one big muscle here um, and then that go starts going into the shoulder muscle and things you can see some of the textures I've been building up in here so this needs to come like all over the body all over any of these other sort of muscle shapes I've put on first um, this is how I prefer to work I just like to um, build a lot of the shapes up first I still need to do a lot of like neck um, ridges like this uh, and then I'll build all the textures over the top um, so it is a lot of work I've put quite a lot of detail into it um, but I've still got a lot to do with the ears I noticed they tend to have like a sort of ridge in here so I, I I might go in and kind of um I use like a Dremel drill so if you ever need to take any of the milli part back again you can you can sort of sand it or you can use a Dremel drill just to take bits off so I'll probably put a ridge um, in the middle part here you can see where this is all just still really rough it all needs it all needs scales and things added to it but uh, he's coming on um, so I'm working on him you know quite regularly at the moment so I'll try and post more videos um, as I do it uh, and I'll definitely be posting up videos you know once he's 
uh, painted as well and done. And then I'm going to spray lacquer him uh, to give him a sort of a wet look. Uh, and I'll have to add his uh, his uh, Mohican on the top. Nice big white Mohican, which will make a big difference. Um, the other thing I was going to mention just before I finish this video is um, the position of his legs. Like I really wanted him to look like you know he was just about to kind of leap at you or attack you or something. Um, so quite a lot of poses of gremlins, you know, the legs are just kind of static and he's just kind of stood there. Um, this one, I try, what I tried to do was have this leg, you know, coming forward uh, and the other leg set back. Um, and I think that makes quite a difference to the kind of look of him. Um, obviously we'll be able to tell more when he's finished, but um, yeah, I, I think it's helping. I am starting to get the effect that he's just about to leap at me. Um, I said in my other video that I made his ears, I think, just a little larger um, than they would be. Uh, there was part of me that thought I, I could, you know, file some back again and make them a bit smaller. But I think I like how they are at the moment because, I, again, I think it helps the position of him. I think it makes him look like he's going to leap at you. Uh, anyway, check out my other videos. There is a video of a uh, sort of tour of my studio with some of the other creatures that I've made. Um, and if you like 80s toys and collectibles, uh, check out my other videos. Um, and hit subscribe if you want to see kind of regular um, video updates that I post. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.